What's up everyone, Mark Lobiner, CEO, MTS Nutrition. So we get a lot of conversation about carbohydrate, protein, and fat. We are driven to the edge, thinking that if we eat carbohydrate, well, we'll get fat and we'll die. The keto crowd, the carnivore crowd, they do a great job promoting their lifestyle. And I'm not one to diss them, I just don't think it's something you can adhere to long term. I'm a fan of a long-term lifestyle, not a short-term diet. And even if ketogenic diets had the greatest results in studies, which they don't, I'd still say it's not a good diet. And the reason being is a lot of people really like carbohydrate. They're tasty and they do serve a purpose. Glucose is a fuel for the body. But there's a question I got in the Tiger Fitness Group and it's on Facebook. You can go check it out. Um, it's in my description box below. And the question was, when does the body turn protein into carbohydrate and should we limit our protein intake because of this? Now, as you know, the point of this channel, I want it to be more like we're having a conversation. For example, I was at my brother-in-law's wedding. An old friend of mine from high school asked me some questions about diet. I rambled on for 30 minutes because I love this shit, because I live it. But I didn't sit there and Google stuff and you know, a lot of these channels go in and they just cite research and they cite it. And I think that's a bit lazy because they're literally just building up an argument. What I do is I give you my opinion based on all the data I've read. Can I pinpoint exactly where I got the data every time? Absolutely not. But there's a conversation. I want you to feel that way and also want it to be off the top of my head because I just think it's funner than me reading notes, which I do sometimes, but not here. So essentially, the studies we have, such as Helms 2014, show that when you're dieting for a contest, around one and a half grams per pound of body weight of protein per day. So for me, let's say I weigh, okay, let's just round down. I weigh 200 pounds. That would be about 300 grams of protein a day, which is a shitload of protein. Now, a lot of the anti-protein zealots, a lot of the people in the vegan camp, which I am not dissing vegans whatsoever because I don't want that battle because one of my best friends and business partners, Mike, is a vegan and he could beat me up. Um, one of the main things you look at is the fact that, you know, a lot of people say that's bad for your kidneys. Now, however, all the data I have seen on healthy individuals show that higher protein intakes, and I can cite studies, but I won't, um, will not lead to any kidney damage. We've had complete fine results. Your BUN and your creatinine might be elevated, but that's just because, you know, um, BUN is blood urea nitrogen. That's nitrogen, which is exactly your body expelling excess protein. Nitrogen, you know, it is what it is. So the question is, and a lot of people get this, a lot of you guys who know this stuff, it's a good refresher, or you just might want to turn this off because it's basic and rudimentary if you have a degree or if you've read about this, but essentially when you eat excess protein, a lot of people are like, what happens to it? Does it turn straight to fat? Does it turn to muscle? Does it make you bigger? Your body is a frigging amazing organism, an amazing uh, marvel. And the reason that I, one of the reasons I believe in a superior being a God isn't because I'm stupid and I can't read science. I'm a science-based individual. But just because no matter how much science I read, I can't explain the marvels and how wonderful and how amazing the human body is at adapting, at evolving. And because of that, I do believe that there's something cosmic. I don't know what it is, but that's me getting a little bit too into it. But I don't want to create a religious battle on this because it's not what it's about. This is about science, but I'm just going into how I look at the body and I, man, especially naked hot chicks. No, just kidding. I look at the human body and I'm like, this is a wonderful, amazing, miraculous creation, what we've done, what the human body is. And... So your body has two essential nutrients, okay? Now, essential amino acids and essential fatty acids. Notice I didn't say essential carbohydrate. Your body does not need carbohydrate to survive. So what happens and why we don't need carbohydrate is the body has mechanisms to drive energy. And while glucose is the body's, I'm not gonna say most preferred because then keto people will be like, your body loves keto, your body loves fat. Don't want that debate either. I want to keep this as simple as possible. Your body can operate on different things. I do believe when glucose is present, this is a fact, when glucose is present, your body's like, give me that glucose. I'm going to use that to use a lot of brain function. I'm going to use it for muscle function. I'm going to use it to power my body, right? 
But let's say the body is lacking in protein. Let's say you have just enough protein to get by and you have no carbohydrate or very little carbohydrate. Your body burns through all the carbohydrate, but you have ample amounts of fat. That is known as a ketogenic diet. What your body will do is phenomenal, is it shifts fuel sources. It goes from being a glucose fuel source to a fat-based fuel source because it converts the fat into energy known as ketones through a process known as ketogenesis. So that would make you ketogenic. What that means, your body stops running on glucose, it starts running on ketones. And I like ketones because I think they're very beneficial for the brain health. Now there's a way to supplement with ketones without being in ketosis, and that is using something known as BHBs. We have it in Ambrosia Ritual. There's a lot of keto products on the market. This isn't about ketosis, it's about carbohydrate. So let's say your body is lacking carbohydrate and lacking a lot and, and not, not deficient in protein. It's deficient. It's gonna use fat for energy, and that's why ketosis works. Because ketosis essentially uses your body's um, uh, provided fat, systemic fat, and it also uses stored fat for energy. And that will do wonders for energy. And once you switch over, you'll notice you'll feel great in ketosis, especially mentally. Fasting, also, when you're lacking nutrients altogether, your body will utilize your body's fat stores and enter ketosis. One good way, if you're looking to get into ketosis for your ketogenic diet, kick off your ketogenic diet with a 24 to 48 hour fast. Boom, you're in ketosis. And you'll feel better. So it's kind of like rushing it to feel better because once you hit ketosis, when you're going through the switch, it sucks. Once you get ketosis, it's great. So then let's assume you have ample carbohydrate. Pretty simple. Your body just runs on glucose. Whatever carbohydrate you eat, whether it's, whether it's watermelon, whether it's oatmeal, whether it's table sugar, your body will find a way to make glucose out of that. Table sugar or glucose goes, boom, it's straight to the body. It's glucose, your body's preferred, preferred source. Whereas a complex carbohydrate like um, oatmeal, whatever fruit, it gets broken down where it then becomes sugar in the body, which you could argue is better for you. So what happens when you have extra protein? And let's say you have adequate fat and adequate carbohydrate. Where does that protein go? Well, it gets converted into carbohydrate via gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is an as needed basis. Now excess calories, as you know, will be stored as fat, whether it's from protein, carbs, or fat. And while protein does in fact burn more calories to use it than any other thing, that's called the thermic effect of food, it's not that big of a deal. So if you get 20 grams of protein and 20 grams of carbs, I don't feel it's really big of a deal. Now we can go even further in that and explain insulin and glucagon increases because with protein, your insulin and glucagon increase with just carb alone, your insulin without glucagon increases. And that's what causes some of the del deleterious health effects. Look at glucagon as a counter for insulin. So when it does this, it's a bit better for you in my term, in my opinion, for your health. So what happens when you lack carbohydrate, you lack fat, and you just eat a lot of fucking protein? Or let's say you have adequate fat, adequate protein, and lack carbohydrate. Well, your body converts protein into carbohydrate via a process known as gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis, essentially, your body takes the protein it needs for rebuilding. Muscle repair, recovery, cell regen, whatever protein does, right? It's like, you know what? I'm done with this. So then your body goes, okay, we're going to convert this into an energy source. Okay, because protein is not used directly for energy. So it goes, okay, we're gonna convert this shit to glucose. Breaks it down, yada, 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 boom, you got glucose. So that's what happens to extra protein. So let's say your caloric needs 2,000 calories. You hit 2,000 calories, yet your protein grams go over and make you up by 2,100 calories. You are still in a caloric surplus. And if that protein is not used for rebuilding, that protein will be stored as fat because even though it's excess protein, your body will break it down into glucose, which will become stored energy if your body has ample energy. And that's why to lose fat, whether you eat a ketogenic diet, a glucose dependent diet or a high carbohydrate diet or a high protein diet, if you're not in a caloric deficit, and I've done videos about this, it doesn't make one F of a difference doesn't make one F of a difference what macro it comes from, and I can argue health benefits, but that's not the point of this video. You're going to have trouble losing fat, or you might even gain fat. Now, just to delve into the whole which is better, here's the deal. Carbohydrate are delicious, and I've said this in multiple hundreds, maybe thousands of videos, because I have about 5,000 up there. Basically, here's what I recommend you do on a diet. Set your protein at one gram per pound of body weight. 
If you're dieting to extremely low body fat levels, set your protein to one and a half grams per pound. For a 200 pound person, male or female, that would be 300 grams of protein. I don't like setting it to lean body mass unless you're extremely obese. If you are obese or over fat, or I'd say for a male above 30% body fat, set your protein to where your goal weight's gonna be. I'm not talking about your main goal weight. Let's say you're at 400 pounds, you wanna get down to 300 initially. Set your protein at 300. Fat, I would set that at around 0.5 grams per pound of body weight. So for a 200 pound person, male or female, that'd be about 100 grams of fat. That's your starting point. I would never go below 0.3 grams of fat because remember, fat is essential for hormone, for hormones, for health, for hair. It's very essential. For vitamin and nutrient absorption, a lot of fat soluble vitamins. Wherever your calories are left over, which you could find by either measuring food for a week and then taking the average of the days if you stay the same, or by using a calculator. We have, if you type in T-D-E-E -E calculator, T-D-E-E -E calculator on Tiger Fitness, you'll see our calculator. Wherever the calories are, so let's say you have 2,000 calories from protein and fat, and 3,000 calories is your T-D-E-E, -E, fill in those 1,000 calories with carbs. That'd be an extra 250 grams of carbs to fill out your macros. Basically, set protein, set fat, fill in the rest of carbohydrate. So that right there is a long, over 11 minute, I am so sorry, I tried to keep this under six and I failed miserably, explanation of what happens when you eat excess protein and when it is turned to carbohydrate. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, click on the link in the description box below. I'll put the TDEE calculator there. That's not a game.